Hey, you guys, this is Joe with LVV. So, uh, we're in Dix Hills right now. <clears throat> we got this unit here. It's a 22 unit that has 407 in it. So, let's go right here. It's got 38 back pressure, 180 head pressure. Let's put our, our gauges on. Let's finish up our gauges getting on here. All right, so we got our suction line probe, our liquid line probe on there. It looks like we got 57-ish of a, a superheat, a two subcool. So whenever you have something like this here, all right, that subcool needs to be around around 10. It could be in between 10 and 20. That superheat should be around 10. If it's a fixed orifice, you gotta do some calculations. There's an app for that. You know, but generally speaking, in between 10 and 20 on both of these sides are okay. All right. Just make sure that your suction line temperature is decent. Make sure that your your vapor saturation, the boiling inside the uh, the unit, is is good. Uh, it's not too low to freeze up the uh, to freeze up the um, you know the coil upstairs. Um, so this one here is definitely low on refrigerant. It's got a clean filter in there and everything. We're gonna put. Uh, ace seal inside of it i've had pretty good uh, results with it this is a three a two and a half three ton unit so we're going to put the whole ace seal in there and then we're going to back it up with the 407 which is ready here okay what i do is i like to get rid of all the the air in the system which is by manu manufacturer for ace seal wants you to so i crack it here a little bit allow any air to come out of there Allow air to come out over here, okay, as well as in the charging hose. Okay. Let's do this. That'd be nice, right? Let's, let's crack that ball off. Let's do that. Bleed it the right way. Okay. So all these lines have nothing but refrigerant in them. What I'm going to do is I got low loss fittings. This is where I like to put the A seal in. So this is not going to allow any air to get in, okay? Because all the refrigerant is backed up in there because there's a low loss. I'm going to put you down for a second so I can open this up. All right, so we got the sealer connected. Like I said, all the air is bled out. What we're going to do here is this: we're going to I'm going to crack open the. Normally, what you have to do is you can crack open the uh, high side and the low side. And what that does is it allows the refrigerant to go through here, come up here, go through the manifold, down, and it pushes it in. That's what's good about these. You don't have to pump anything down. Some of these cans, you need less than 60 PSI, all that. But with this here, you could just open the high side and the low side. So what happens is the high side comes through goes through the manifold, comes down, back into the low side, pushes that stuff in there. But we're gonna charge it up, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna reopen our ball valve, all right, and shoot it through. You see that? And you can leave it on with this type of uh, sealer. You can leave that connection on until, uh, until you're done. Now remember guys, let's see over here. Get it back to what it was. Okay, so we got over 47, around 50 superheat, three subcool, a low suction, a low uh, discharge because not a lot of refrigerant. Look at this pressure, this temperature right here. Okay, that's the temperature of the line coming back. Okay, and I really like to say that that's the temperature of the coil, give or take a couple of degrees because that's the suction line coming back. All right, so and it's boiling at 21 which is not good. So let's give it a little bit. Before that, we're gonna zero you out. Zero, right there. Okay, so we know exactly how much we're putting in. And we're just gonna crack it a little bit. You start seeing this come up. You wanna go slow. You don't wanna dump it in there, especially with these older, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's a tin can. It's not a, a scroll, which they don't take liquid very well. Okay. So you let it go in really slow. We got five ounces in there. Okay. 
You know, I know I put a half a pound to a pound in really slow, then stop it. Just to look at my pressures. Now remember guys, you can't look at pressures really until the house is cool. Now luckily we have this unit and this unit, so it's keeping the upstairs pretty cool. So until you get down to I say 75, you really can't you really can't uh, be looking at superheat and subcool. Well really superheat. But see how that see how that subcooling is coming up? It's because now we're filling up this evaporator. Okay, so what's happening is see, we got a little over a pound. Let's shut this down. So what happens is we're introducing refrigerant into here, into the uh, into the condensing unit, and we're filling up the coil here. We'll fill up that coil so that what happens is it comes in as a gas, all right, right out of the compressor. It comes out of the hot gas, then goes into the coils. That fan cools it down, condenses it. By the time it leaves out of the high pressure, right, the, right by that filter, it should be a, a whole uh, a whole line of just liquid going straight up until it gets the metering device. Then when it gets down to the metering device, okay, then uh, once it goes to the metering device, it's gonna drop from that 200 PSI down to that, say, 50, 60 PSI, and then all of a sudden, that's when the cooling process happens. It turns back into a gas. So we wanna make sure that that subcooling, you know, is decent, all right? And the superheat, of course, we wanna get that around 10 as well. So, and see, and you'll see the reflection right in here. And that 72 is gonna get down to around 50s. So we got one pound, two ounces. Let's see what this thing holds, at least just in the in the condenser. Factory charge in ounces, 114. So you just take 114, divide that by 16, and you get what that condenser is gonna hold. getting there you can start seeing this number here start to drop once the evaporator starts to get full of, of liquid then you can start seeing that number get dropped down way way down to into the 50s so yeah the superheat starting to drop that's good sub cooling starting to go up now I gotta use my phone to see what type of head pressure we need so I gotta put you guys on hold all right, guys, so I had to check my uh, online PT chart. When you have a unit like this here, you can take the ambient temperature. It's around 80-something degrees, say 82 degrees right now, 81 degrees. And with this, is a low efficiency, so you add 30 onto it, 25, 30. And you put that into your PT chart, so it's not 85 degrees. It'd be like 111 degrees. Check that on your PT chart, and it tells you approximately what the head pressure should be. And that's set around 2.30. So we're getting close. You see that subcooling's coming up. You can't see the uh, super because I'm still charging. And you see this was 76. Now it's down to 69. It'll continue to drop. See that super heat? It's around 25 and not, what was it, 50? In the 50s before? So we'll get there. got 2.3 pounds all right I'll let you guys know when we're all uh, when we're all dialed in all right guys so we're getting closer all right back pressure 73 super heat is really what you want to be looking for all right at 13 drop down to 12 now look at that Look at that suction line temperature, 59. Okay, so we went from 77 down to 59. It's gonna continue dropping a little bit. We have no more refrigerant going in there right now. 8.6, 8.7 subcooling. I might give it a little bit more, but we wanna take a look at this. When you're charging, regardless if it's an orifice, you know, a TXV should regulate straight up. If it's, uh, if it's, a, if it's a TXV, it should keep it at 10. Okay, unless you're grossly overcharged or whatnot, but that's a smart valve. You should open and close to keep that superheat right around 10, okay? But if you have an orifice and you overcharge, it's just gonna, it just goes through a little hole and that's it, and that, it could plummet your superheat. When you do that, it'll flood back liquid back to the compressor and it'll kill your compressor. 
Okay, so we're at 57 suction line, which is nice, 93 liquid line temperature. All right, we're at 230 PSI. Remember what I was talking about? It was right around there. 230 is 101 liquid line temp. All right, then when it condenses, it's 93. That's why we're getting our 7.8 subcooling. Our temperature coming back from the coil is 57 on the probe, right there. All right, and we got 72 back pressure, 12 superheat, the 45 boiling at the beginning of the of the uh, of the coil. So it's boiling right when it comes out of that piston or it comes out of that TXV. Okay, it drops from 224 down to 71, which gives you that 45 degrees, and then it heats up. It superheats. The hot air goes through the coils, brings it from 45 to around 58. You might have two or three degrees. Um, difference in between the line set and the installation but you know we'll see it looks like this is probably a TXV because it is going up and down a little bit it's probably modulating trying to find what it needs but we'll probably get the super uh, sub cooling up to say 9 or 10 and then we'll get out of here and that number will drop just a bit all right guys so we're just about done here Sub cooling is gonna come up a bit. We just end. We just uh, shut the. Uh, we just shut off the refrigerant, so it's gonna be a little lower, but it should come up. Temperature in the coil is 54, nine degrees sub cooling. We're looking okay here. All right, so I took out the. Uh, I just took out the uh, the sealer. It's connected directly in there, so I'm just gonna. I'm gonna disconnect everything. We're gonna go into the next job. If you notice, you see this here, how it's sweating. That means it's hitting the dew point. That's a good sign. Okay, pulling out a lot of heat. And over here, guys, hot air coming out. No charge, you're gonna see, you're gonna feel cold air coming out of there. And then when you start charging it up correctly, you're gonna see that hot air starts blasting in the face. All right, so see you guys next video. Take care.